The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Welcome into my state of mind. I am Dan York. Tonight we meet two more entrepreneurs who are frustrated with state government. The grant program is the subject of conversation here and has been for a long time, both here and on the radio on WPRO weekdays 3 till 6. We hope you tune in. Um, we took a couple of weeks, maybe a month's vacation on this conversation because we've had other fish to fry, including trying to figure out how to get the schools open. But Governor Raimondo uh, and her politics on this have proved to be faulty, and the business community certainly understands what the fault is and where the fault lies. Primarily, the background is that the state got a $1.25 billion grant from the feds to respond to COVID. Businesses signed a petition, of some 4,000, asking for 10% of that to be distributed in the form of grants throughout the state. She ignored that petition, mostly because it was partly organized by Lieutenant Governor Dan McKee, and the politics are just not healthy between those two offices. So rather than picking up on the suggestion, she came up with her own $50 million grant program administered by Commerce, the department that runs economy in this state, full of restrictions. Jim Hummel of the Hummel Report and Projo uh, asked about this. The headline reflects the answer. Only 10% of the money uh, announced more than a month ago, um, almost two months ago, has actually been distributed. The governor kind of uh, fell over herself in responding to the query last week. So I think there will be additional funds available. Um, we are marked the first 50 million and we've dispersed, uh, I think about five of that. So there's another 45 that we're anxious to get out the door. We are looking to um, expand the rules to include sole proprietors, exactly what you're talking about. I don't have a timeline on that. I would say within the next month so with no further ado, let us talk to a couple of business owners who are in waiting, uh, like many have been, looking for some of this alleged help coming from Governor Raimondo that, uh, that even she seems to be somewhat confused about right now. Carl Salvo is the owner of Apple Blossom Preschool in Barrington and is quite the story in terms of how he began uh, that preschool. And Faith Dugan Dubé is a photographer who for 15 years has been running her own Faith Dugan photography business in the uh, beautiful city of Newport. Folks, thank you very much for both joining me on, on the program. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having us, Dan. All right, so COVID hits, and um, rather than getting into the, the, the grant application thing and, and all of that quite yet, let's just, uh, let's just summarize. Uh, and, and again, we've done so many of these conversations that it's not a mystery about what COVID did to, to wreck your business or suspend operations or anywhere in between. Uh, but give me the, uh, give me the short version of uh, Faith on what happened uh, you know, in March uh, with your business. So COVID has wreaked havoc on the events industry. I mean, we are effectively shut down until further notice. As soon as this news hit, we saw March weddings obviously postponed, push back April, then May, then June. Here we are in September. We have January 2021 now moving. Uh, every, everyone is either postponing into 2021. Some couples are scaling back their weddings into intimate weddings, micro weddings. Uh, going along with the restrictions and the guidelines have been provided by the state, but most couples are postponing into 2021 so that they can have the wedding of their dreams with dancing and bar service and all of those types of things. So we've moved uh, many of our contracts, uh, we've transferred all of our contracts into 2021 with no transfer fees, no price increases, anything like that. We've been incredibly accommodating to all of our couples. Um, our hearts go out to them. We know this is really difficult for our brides and grooms as well. So that's, that's what we've been doing. And, you know, we have a little bit here and there with these micro ceremonies and things like that. But other than that, 2020 is a wash. <laughs> I, I get that. And Carl, what happened to you and the kids in the school? So uh, here comes COVID and um, the rumblings out of the state house is that something bad's coming along and the term first responders becomes 
an advocate word for me to say, oh, State House is looking for support. We need to support first responders. Gina Raimondo, the governor, is, is looking for a number of daycare facilities to support the efforts so that first responders can go back to work. They touch base with me in an open forum and say, what have you got to offer? And I'm like, well, not only do I have a facility that can hold children, I have a license for a full-time uh, chef to provide food. We can provide doctors to come in. We, we kill ourselves. I go ahead, I invent uh, the first face mask with a replaceable N95 uh, filter and do all this stuff with the hopes that the governor said, Carl, this is great. What else can you do? I said, well, I'm an engineer and you're looking for all this paperwork for this questionnaire thing. So I developed a mobile app that um, I see the other day you uh, interviewed um, Nancy Bai from Jamestown. She's using the software and loves it. She's a big proponent of mine. So Apple Blossom was told, go ahead, you're doing everything great. And then she, the governor came out with, well, the solution to um, childcare is gonna be care.com. Well, care.com was nothing but a referral service for people local in the community to watch your kids. It didn't really meet the requirements. So we kind of wondered about that. And then we were shut down. I, I, I was told to shut down, but be prepared to get ready when we can go. Uh, we did all the equipment. We invested heavily in machinery for purification, disinfection. And we opened June 8th with the promise of a business loan called restore Rhode Island and I go to apply for it and it's excluded childcare. What? And that's the story I see that Nancy told you too. And what it is, is that they pushed me to another program that child wear was covered, but that program you had to be connected to a federal program called CCAP and take federal funding that takes years to get approved in. And I'm a private pay organization doing the, the necessary and that's where we failed. And now I'm struggling with the SBA loan shutting down payments, and we've got parents concerned about coming back to school. Okay. Well, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the nitty gritties of the, of the, the original momentum for uh, business grant, uh, you know, emergency funds, uh, the governor's response uh, to the lieutenant governor's plan, what we have now and how it's not working. All coming back here on Dan York's State of Mind with my guests, uh, Carl Savo from Apple Blossom uh, Preschool in Barrington and Faith Dugan uh, from Newport with her photography business. Stay tuned to Dan York's State of Mind. Welcome back to my State of Mind. Dan York here with Carl Salvo from Apple Boston Preschool in Barrington and Faith Dugan Duby from the uh, Faith Dugan Photography in Newport. All right, so you've got a background on the, the businesses that they have and, and the early challenges that they had with COVID, which of course linger. Everybody's kind of back in business, sort of, but there have been financial gaps and of course there's all sorts of instability. Back early in the year, um, the lieutenant governor, through his teleconferencing, um, formed a coalition of businesses that um, really uh, blew up with businesses who were screaming help. Some 4,000 signatures electronically on a petition delivered to the state house for the governor to respond to a request for 10% of the allocated federal $1.25 billion worth of dough to the uh, state for COVID relief asking for 10% of that to be distributed in grant form to the businesses, $125 million. She ignored it completely. She ignored the application. She ignored the petition. She ignored the entire thing. But she came up with a, hey, I got an idea. How about $50 million through Commerce, her cabinet secretary, Stefan Pryor, to organize a disbursement of $50 million. The restrictions are heavy. The, uh, the, the amount of folks who have been eliminated are significant. And let's talk to at least one. Faith, you are an entrepreneur, a sole proprietor. You don't qualify, correct? No, I do not. And that leaves you between that rock and hard place. Carl, you were talking about some of the application process. 
I'm guessing you have not received a grant, but what is the specific reason why you have not received a grant? Uh, child cares are um, considered covered under a different program, under a program called LISC, but child cares uh, covered under LISC have to be connected to a federal grant or a federal subsidy program for DCYF inclusion. I'm a private pay company, so I don't fit in either of them. Okay, all right. So the, the moral of the story right now seems to be um, that the business community rose up organically with a little bit of inspiration from uh, Lieutenant Governor Dan McKee, who's made small business his thing. The politics of this thing have the governor ignoring the lieutenant governor because those who support the governor's next future don't want to see Lieutenant Governor Dan McKee become the governor because of some of his union stances and all that kind of a thing. So that's all the political background on this. Unfortunately, it causes the governor to ignore the momentum of these small businesses who care not about the politics, but about surviving in their own and their own P&Ls, right. and, and, and you're left with, boy, I could use some help because, by the way, let me ask you, Carl, did you get PPP at the beginning? Uh, good point. Yes, I did. I was uh, one of the first ones with my bank who I had a relationship with, and Bank Newport uh, was the one that funded me, and I, because of the initiative that I thought we were going to move forward, I was able to hire uh, my staff back to go and meet the procedures and implementation requirements set forth by the state, the Department of Health, and CDC on a turnaround, very quick basis, and ready to go. Okay, so you got PPP. Did you get PPP? No, I'm not eligible for PPP because I don't have any employees. All right. So you're in a real spot. You, you yes, I am. <laughs> somehow, the governor and commerce don't seem to understand that sole proprietors are a bulk of the small business economy here in this state. And even Carl, it's not like you got 50 employees. You're a sub S. Uh, I'm guessing, Faith, are you an LLC as a, well, what are you? No, I'm, I'm a sole proprietor full, all the way. Okay, so you're a DBA. You're just doing yes. your tax form. You, you're a DBA, mm -hmm. Faith, doing business in space. You, yes. uh, Carl, you're Carl uh, doing business in a sub S. And by the way, you need to know, folks, a sub S is a corporation, but it files on its personal tax return. So that is correct. Carl, so Carl's, um, you know, financial success or failure or his cash flow really on, on his on his business model applies to his personal tax return. And that's how a sub S works. So you guys may have different uh, categories of taxable accountability, but for the most part, you're the same kind of businesses. Um, the idea that that the Commerce Department put up a set of uh, can't do's versus mm -hmm. can do's in this application process must have your hair being pulled out. The idea that, that, that you don't qualify for this says what to you, Faith? Well, our NI, uh, NAICS code has us as not severely impacted, which to me is absurd since we are still effectively shut down until further notice. Tell me, so about, that, tell me about that code. That code is, is, is from where? So that code is our industry code that you need to apply for this grant money. And every, every industry has been given a code. And then the powers that be decide whether we have been, you know, restaurant business is severely impacted. Wedding, any, any wedding business at all has, has not been, is not showing up as severely impacted even though we're completely shut down. So that, that's a change that needs to be okay, so, implemented. So that code is, is a code that commerce has inserted into the application process, correct? Correct, yes. Carl, is your business considered to, to be, uh, no, well, you're, you don't even qualify because of- that's, that's the code that stops you. They give you, um, part of the application process is an Excel spreadsheet, and they tell you to go get your industry code and put it in this Excel square and you put it in and two lines below it say oh, you're excluded you're done you don't, you don't apply because it's child care industry national industry number child care that's that's what i do so so, so in effect what we've what we've what, what the gov yeah, yeah on well you're seeing the show folks most likely on tuesday 
uh, after Labor Day. But mid last week on, on Wednesday, the governor actually had the audacity to tell reporter Jim Hummel, who inquired about this, uh, that she thought the demand was down when he put it out. No. Some, some 10 percent. Some, it's, it is laughable that, that, that some 10 percent of the $50 million she allocated for this grant to businesses in the form of a cap of $15,000 was, was really not something that the, the people were looking for. The point is that everybody at every turn, either on the computer or through the news, has been told that they don't qualify, correct? You hit the nail on the head, Dan. That's, that's the whole point right there. It's, it's a bait and switch situation. I, I'm not going to apply to a club that tells me that, uh, you know, I don't know, Irish guys with rosacea can't uh, <laughs> qualify. I mean, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just, you know, sorry. You know, if your golf handicap is more than 15 and you're a 25, you don't qualify. You don't apply to a club that says you can't have more than a 15. I mean, this stuff is very simple. And, and when we come back, I want these two entrepreneurs to talk to the governor directly through the Zoom camera about what they need and why they need it and why these restrictions are just, well, still. We'll be right back on Dan York's State of Mind. Stay with us. Back to my state of mind, Dan York, with uh, two business people who are just trying to get it done. Of course, uh, Carl Salvo, Apple Blossom uh, Preschool in Barrington, Faith Dugan Dubay, who owns her own photography studio in, in Barrington. I'm sorry, in Newport. Um, look, We've gone through the, the, the mess of this. Speak to, uh, in, in short form, because I have a couple more questions, speak to, Faith, what the, what the governor misses in eliminating self-employed people mm -hmm. for five or ten or $15,000 grant, and what would that money actually do to keep you going? Mm -hmm. So sole proprietor, hence the term sole proprietor. Most of us, we don't have employees. That's why, that's why we are sole proprietors. So to, to eliminate that whole portion of small business owners, especially in the wedding business, it, it's killing us. It's starving us and it's, it's killing us. And some of my colleagues that did have employees that were able to apply for this grant program only received $2,500. And Dan, that's not enough when we are issuing full refunds to brides and grooms that we can't take their weddings on next year because we're already booked with another COVID day transfer. We need this full $15,000. And honestly, even if I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth that I'm grateful for the money, but we need the full 15,000 just to stay afloat. There are people that are never going to come back from this. Uh, Carl, uh how, how crucial is this money to your business? To the viewer who says, look, you know, ride it out, man. You know, your kids are back, blah, blah, blah. You know, what is it that, that drives you to say this money is, is necessary for business survival? Well, primarily it was because of a promise for small grant money to come with an investment in my business to stand up an industry so that we can be on the national stage in the Washington Post with the head director of CDC saying Rhode Island is a model of preschool way of running business. And the, uh, August 26th, there's a Washington Post article, Dr. Uh, Rosefield saying that Rhode Island's preschool is exemplary and it's because of efforts that we were told to make to show that families, you know, when, when families drop their kids off here and the responsibility that I have with these children to protect them, I take very seriously. And I've done everything possible with the hope that the grant program would turn around so that parents can go back to work and stand up an economy. All right. Um, what do you say about the politics of this, each of you, as a final comment, Carl? Uh, the politics of this is I think the governor has really missed the mark on trying to really see that all businesses matter and that all of us have our own special case. So if we're applying, look at every single case and see the nuances. And if there's a problem, discuss the nuance and support the nuance with whatever's necessary through commerce. Well said. 
I feel like we're collateral damage as business owners because of a political agenda, to be perfectly honest. And we feel starved, we feel vulnerable, we're terrified, and we need this money, we need it now. When the governor says, you know, I, I want to lift this economy. I mean, look, she, her, 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 her early leadership on, on the virus and lowering the curve, I think, was admirable. She caught, she caught, um, she caught the wave uh, early on. Uh, but I will tell you, the manager between the schools and the school opening and, and the thing, clearly she needs some management help. It's amazing. Some of you folks who learn how to manage your lives and your business on your own could, could, could help her, you know, could help her understand the process and think about this whole thing. Look, I mean, she says she wants to save a lot of this money from COVID for, for the, uh, the state government operations. Uh, the thing that I'm concerned with, and I'll have a final thought from you, each of you on this, is if we don't, if we don't inject stimulus into this economy, uh, the taxes that you pay will go away and we won't have state government to save. Uh, and, that's, and that's how important this is. Uh, last thought, Carl. I, I can't agree more. You know, I mean, one of the most important things is keeping people employed. And the effort for PPP did exactly that. I hired people back. They got to work. They produced procedures and, and equipments to, to stand up an industry and, and, and allow families to want to come back to Apple Blossom. That was not an easy thing to do. I mean, I've got 20% capacity when I was full three months be before and parents are, are scrutinizing every detail and it, it takes a lot. So I, I think it's important to keep people employed and move the economy forward so we can generate revenue so she can have a budget. Last word, Faith. We, we need to open up this economy and if social gatherings are going to be vilified as super spreader events, then I'm calling on an industry, events industry bailout. This 15,000 is not gonna be enough. We're gonna need a complete bailout in the industry. I'm very terrified that we might not have an industry to return to next year. Uh, uh, thank you for your thoughts. We'll, we'll keep in touch. And we appreciate you having the guts to, to speak out. Uh, Carl Salvo, Apple Blossom uh, uh, Preschool in Barrington, and Faith Dugan, New Baker Ones, Faith Dugan Photography in Newport. Final word in Week Impact on Daniel State of Students. Continue to follow the plight of small business in this state because without the stimulus and the economy and their survival, we got big problems. You have a great night. Talk to you on the radio at 3 on WPRO. Good night.